If you recall from the last video, we started to see the code structure I will be using to create a workflow so that everything that we create onto the different research studies can be then used onto our production environment. So let me now change and go through the code to be able to show you how this has evolved and to explain each of the methods that the different classes will be using. We will start from the asset class. In the init method, I have made some functionality to be able to download uh, different asset types, whether it's a traditional asset or a Darwin asset, with the different FTP credentials that are offered onto DarwinX. That's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, I have made some functionality also to be able to use not only historical data, but also live data. And I have made a generalized function that it's the get data to be able to assign different specific methods depending on if the historical data will be getting its uh, Darwin data or a traditional asset data. If you go here down below to the different methods, uh, the, the, the primary idea that you need to get is that we, we will be able to get uh, the data that we want from two dates. Let me go back here to the end method and show you where those end dates and start dates are just uh, defined. Okay, so here in the get historical data of the traditional asset, we will be able to download the bid data on one side and the ask data on the other side, and at the same time being able to save it to Pickle. And finally, we will create a data frame joining the bid and ask data calling just with this function. If we go to the join bid and ask historical data, we will see that uh, we will be using another method to be able to mix uh, that bid and ask data and to form a combined data frame. That data frame will be then be saved to a CSV so that we can then, with the use of the following method, be able to read it and uh, wrangle with that data to create some calculations and we will see in the following section of this video. Jumping into the portfolio class, we see how it inherits from the asset class so that it is able to use its methods and attributes to request the individual asset data to form our portfolio. So the portfolio will be created onto a dictionary as the keys will be the symbols of each asset and the values will be the data frames holding the data for that asset. And just to note here that I have implemented functionality to be able to form the data of the portfolio on the fly and at the same time, read the data from different files so that we are not uh, actually requesting the data to the FTP servers each and every time we want to make a research study. So this is it about the portfolio data. We will get onto the research study class now. We will wrap up all this. We will conclude this video by going through the research study class. This class will act as a wrapper of the portfolio class and will inherit all the methods from it and also from the asset class. As we can see here, the inheritance that it performs. If we go to the init constructor, depending on the string that we pass to the form or read parameter, we will form the portfolio historical data container on the fly or just read it from the previously downloaded files. This functionality is just implemented here, as we can see. Then we have some methods to perform calculations on the data frames that holds the raw data. For example, we can generate the log returns, generate raw returns, mid price or rolling mean, and we will be adding more methods as we go forward on the series. So the performing calculations of the data frames, these data frames hold the raw data of the individual assets of the portfolio. And we will also have plotting capabilities in these below methods here, like plot returns or plot distribution, that we will use in the first version of the research study we will make on the following videos. Just one note to understand better the research study class, the portfolio data still is in the portfolio dictionary. And we will need to loop the items to perform the calculations, as we can see in this loop here. Those calculations will persist on that data structure until we close the script so that we can concatenate different transformations sequentially to perform our analysis or make some plots. So this is it. Uh, so be sure to stay tuned for the following video in which I will be making some examples to download the data for different assets, forming portfolios and setting different parameters so that we can have different data raw formats.